What's going on my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today we are continuing on with our cardiovascular assessment and electrocardiogram like a boss series and we're going to be discussing torsades de poing. So torsades de poing is actually a pretty interesting rhythm. The rate will be between 250 to 350 beats per minute. It'll be irregular and P waves will not be present. So because P waves aren't present, PR intervals will not be seen, and our QRS, just like with our ventricular tachycardia, are wide, they're ugly, they're disgusting, they're greater than that 0.12 seconds. Definition for this is two competitive foci creating a twisting-like pattern. Recognition of this rhythm is imperative as antiarrhythmics can cause this dysrhythmia. So causes of torsades can be hypoxemia, electrolyte concerns, specifically low magnesium, medications known to prolong QT intervals, such as our antiarrhythmics, AV blocks, bradycardia, and subarachnoid hemorrhage can actually cause this. Torsades de Poin can lead to ventricular fibrillation and bradycardia if it is not treated. So how do we treat this arrhythmia? We're going to give oxygen if oxygenation is inadequate, less than 94%. We're going to provide magnesium sulfate. That'll really help a lot with this rhythm. And we can also consider lidocaine. So let's talk about magnesium sulfate. It is recommended for cardiac arrest only if torsades de poin or hypomagnesemia is present. It is not routinely recommended for acute myocardial infarction being present. It has been given, but it's not routinely given. So dosing for cardiac arrest will be between one to two grams of magnesium sulfate diluted in 10 mLs of D5W. But with our patients that have pulse or they're having an acute myocardial infarction with low magnesium, we can consider a loading dose of one to two grams mixed in 50 to 100 mLs of D5W over five to 60 minute intervals, followed by 0.5 to one gram per hour IV, titrated based on how it best controls the torsades. So additional considerations when it comes to magnesium sulfate is a fall in blood pressure with rapid administration may occur occasionally, so we really need to make sure that we're monitoring their hemodynamics. And we wanna use this precautiously when it comes to our renal failure patients, it can actually make it worse. So we really need to monitor their hemodynamics as well as I's and O's. So when looking at lidocaine, lidocaine is considered immediately after the return of spontaneous circulation, such as ROSC with our ventricular fibrillation, pulses, ventricular tachycardia, cardiac arrest patients, and it's also an alternative to amiodarone in cardiac arrest for ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, and our stable monomorphic ventricular tachycardias. So when we're looking at dosing for cardiac arrest, the initial dose will be between one to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram IV or IO. Refractory ventricular fibrillation, um, additional doses can be given at 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per kilogram IV push every five to 10 minutes with a maximum dosing of no more than three doses or a total of three milligrams per kilogram. If we have to give this as maintenance dosing, we're usually looking at one to four milligrams per minute or 30 to 50 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So other considerations when it comes to lidocaine that we wanna consider is prophylactic use and acute myocardial infarction is contraindicated. We don't wanna give this to these patients. Reduced dosing for the maintenance dose is considered when we have impaired liver function or left ventricular dysfunction as well as we want to discontinue, discontinue infusions if toxicity is present and there are signs and symptoms. I hope that this video was helpful in elevating your cardiac knowledge and helping you pass those exams like a boss. Make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com where you can get copies of these resources, the PowerPoints, as well as test questions that I will be including with each one of these videos within the series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions and make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye.